Sarah Lee is a German professor at ASU, and she's been named the 2024 Language Teacher of the Year for her work in assisting dyslexic students and advocating for neurodiverse learners of world languages. And Sarah Lee joins us right now. Congratulations. Thank you. So far, it's only for the Southwest, but I'm actually going to be traveling to Philadelphia by the end of this week, and I'm going to be yeah. representing the Southwest and Arizona, you're hopefully well. You're still a teacher of the year somewhere, and that's, <laughs> that's a good thing to be. Um, focusing on language and learning with mm -hmm. disabilities, what are we talking about here? So when you have, when you're neurodiverse and you have a language disability, you have that when you're learning a language. And of course, it's very different from when, whether you're learning it in your first language, so learning how to read and to write, because you already know how to speak. You already know what the words are, but you still have to learn how to read and write. When you're learning a second language, when you're not bilingual, but later in life, then you have to learn how to, you need to learn all the new vocabulary. You know, and reading and writing is actually not that important because you have those skills already, but you're communicating. So it is a different, um, it is a different way of learning. And so when you're neurodiverse or you have a learning disability, it's going to affect your learning differently. I was going to say, it seems like dyslexia would be difficult. Obviously, you know, things it's difficult to, to learn. But if you're learning a second language, that would seem to compound that difficulty, but that's, is that necessarily so? And you know, this is interesting because a lot of people have the impression, oh, I've struggled when I learned how to read and write, so I'm terrified of learning a second language. But it's actually not the case at all because when you're learning a second language, in world language learning, we're focusing on communication. We're focusing on getting the word across, right? right. It's not about uh, learning again how to read and write. And depending on which kind of language you learn, for example, German is a language where the phoneme grapheme correspondence, so the sounds and the letters and how they correspond, it's much easier than it is in English. And therefore, it can be that when you are dyslexic, it's gonna be easier in one language, like for example, learning German is gonna be easier for English speakers than it was to learn how to read and write ah, in English. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That it would be easier for dyslexic folks to learn in a particular language. Right. Okay, right. so we're dealing with kids here with dyslexia. How best do you work with them? What, what, are, what, are, the, what are the techniques? What, what made yes. you Teacher of the Year? <laughs> So there are different, when I, when I give my workshops, I'm always telling my, my teachers, you know, there is something, there is a, the perfect way of doing it. And even though I would love to do it, I can't do it because I don't have the, um, I don't have the time and the resources that I would like to have to do like one-on-one -on -one training, right? So doing really kind of a therapy. This is not what we expect from teachers. So even, I'm always talking about no cost methods. Even if you have something small, like for example, with my college students, I allow them to take a quick picture of the whiteboard instead of having to write it down while they're listening because it's taking the writing part and it allows them to focus on what we're saying or using other no-cost methods like uh, text-to-speech or uh, speech-to-text apps when they have to read longer texts at home. So we can do it, you know, pretty much using an audiobook and using the audio input instead of the reading. So there are a lot of ways easy ways that have a major impact on how to help students. And, and yet, I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, dyslexia differs from kid to kid? I mean, if it does, how much? <laughs> so dyslexia is really, we have this whole range. We have this range from that they're showing signs of dyslexia to that they are um, very severely dyslexic. And so each individual, learn each person is unique, yes, right? Each yeah. person is very individual. And that's the same with dyslexia as well, where each person is individual. But what's really important is world language learning is so much more than just learning the language. The heart of world language learning is culture and intercultural competence and all those 21st Boy. century skills like cognitive abilities and emotional intelligence and all that, so, so seeing language learning as so much more than just, you know, the few words that I don't know to write, that is really important. And we should mention that you kind of got started with this back in Germany, correct? Right, yeah. Uh, with, with your mom, was that true? <laughs> At an institute for dyslexia, is that true? <laughs> so the story is that, so I grew up in Germany and um, I got my first university degree in Germany 
And then uh, I went to Michigan State and I wrote my master's thesis and my mom really wanted me to come back to Germany and I love linguistics and so she got me in touch with this Dyslexia Institute and they offered me a job and my mom was so happy that I came back to Germany and that she, you know, made this work. But then I met my husband and love, and now I moved to Arizona, and so she lost me again to America. <laughs> and I'm, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Sure she's probably calling again saying, how's it going out there? <laughs> I well, know. And, and you can tell her how it's going. You just got to teach her. And the Southwest Conference on Language Teaching, mm -hmm. real quickly, what is that? That is the regional, so we have for each state, we have our state uh, language association in Arizona, it's ASLA, and then each state goes together into the regional um, state, uh, the, the regional language association, and that would be Southwest Cold. Um, and then all of five, the five regional ones come together in our national, which is uh, called the uh, ACTFL. And that's going to be the conference that's happening this that's, coming weekend. That's the biggie. That's the, well, good luck on that. And thank congratulations so on this. And thank, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We thank appreciate it. Thank you so much it. for having me.